So let us open up our Bibles to Philippians chapter 1. Uh, the title of this message is Our Pain Has a Purpose. I spoke about this um, maybe a month ago, but we're going to continue and we'll probably have another uh, time that I need to complete it. But we're going to get started. Amen. Now, this is talk. I'm, I, I had started talking about our pain has a purpose because we all have pain in our life. We all go through trials. Trials come and go. They're unexpected. They're unwelcome. But we have trials in our lives. Amen. And they don't feel good, do they? They're not fun at all. And just a show of hands, we've all been through trials and tribulations in our life and, and temptations in our life. Amen. But one thing for sure, we have the word of God that can help us. He is a teacher. He educates us. He teaches us everything that we need to know. So the last time I said that we need to put on our big girl straps, we have to put on our big boy straps, and we have to get ready because in this house, we have been prepared for the things that are on the horizon. We've been prepared. We've been praying diligently. Some of us pray two to three times a week with partners. We come to Bible class. We come to church. We listen and we learn. We get messages on the armor of God. We get messages on war and spiritual warfare. And what do we do when calamity comes? Do we buckle? Do we go and hide in the cellar? What do we do? Are we able to stand up against afflictions? I mean, it's something to really think about because we're living here. We don't know how much time we have here on this earth. But I can tell you it's, it's short term compared to eternity. And while we're here, God has called us to do something. Pastor Noel just said it, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Whatever God has called you to do, you need to be ready to do it. Evangelist Naomi said, we're not ready. That's the word that was given. We're not ready. It's time to refocus, reprogram. But we need to get ready. And we don't have much time to sit around and twilly dee, twilly die and thinking about it, but I'm a practical person because I like to know how. I used to ask Pastor Kyle, well, how do you have faith? How do you, how do, you do that? Because faith endures the test of time. Faith obeys. Faith will not allow you to consent to having sex outside of marriage. Uh-oh. That's what faith does. And it's important that we get it together because, let me tell you, trials come, temptations come. They're inevitable, James says. And he told us how we are to respond. He says, count it all joy when you go through various trials. Count it all joy. So we ought to take that and make that up, make a joyful opportunity to draw closer to God. So this is how it works. I was working for this lady, and she had some issues. I ain't going into all details, but we were pulled in this office, and she was just going off. And just for a hot second, I wanted to just cuss her out. I mean, it was just a smidgen, but I felt it. I felt it rising up. I felt my flesh just. And then I started pinching myself. I said, no. I said, Lord, bless her. I was, saying to my, I was in my head saying, Lord, bless her. Bless her family. Bless her finances. Bless her. Bless her. You have to do it immediately. You cannot wait. When trials come knocking, respond with faith. I started saying that, and it got, it got better. 
And then you know what? I said, okay, I take that responsibility. Actually, she demoted me. I was a director of nurses. I was hurt. It was painful. But I prayed for her and I blessed her. Then I came to Saturday prayer. You see what I said? I came to Saturday prayer. See, some of us, we probably would have just went home. <laughs> and hide out and put the covers over your head and don't brush your teeth, don't brush your body. But I came to Saturday prayer. And Pastor Cynthia met me at that door and I cried, boo-hooed on her shoulders. And I told her what happened. She said, baby girl, it's going to be okay. And she prayed for me. How many of you know that we need to be encouraged? God encourages us. Paul encouraged his believers in the church. We, we need that encouragement. We, can, we can't live without it. We need to be encouraged. We need to encourage one another. I felt better. One week later. I get a phone call. We made a mistake. <laughs> oh, we made a terrible mistake. We, can we take you out to lunch? They wanted me to come. They, see, they demoted me, so I went back into the field. I was no longer in the office. I was cool with that because that was stress. So I went out to eat with them, but you know what I said? I need to seek God for this. I don't know if the Lord wants me to come back and do it. And she says, well, please seek God. <laughs> and please let me know because we need you. I said, okay. But do you see what I'm saying? Paul likens a Christian life as a, as a race. We're, this is a race that we're on. And we're all going to win because we're on the winning side. I feel bad for the people who are on our side. But we, but we want to set an example so the outsiders can see us. And they'll want to know, well, well, Evangelist Naomi, how are you handling that? Lady Di, how are you handling You just handled, just lost her son. And you see she still comes to church every Sunday. She don't miss. You see what I'm saying? Carol lost her husband. Londa lost her mom, but they still come. They pray. We, have, we need that. Because God's word needs to be, oh, what's the word? And just groaning in us. Because it builds us up. It helps us to stand up against the wiles of the enemy. The attacks that we have on our body, the attacks that we have in our mind, the attacks on our finances, the attacks on our children. When they come, we'll know how to deal with it. But if we get our Achilles heel torn and we retreat, God wants us to be strong in him, in him and the power of his might. Yeah. Not our might. Yeah. Let me tell you, I can't remember what verse in Psalms, but he said that he will give power to the weak. Yeah. That he will strengthen the powerless. It's his power. Yeah. It's his power that we need. And it's in us. So let's get going. I, I love how Paul talks about the athletes and my grandson Tremaine he's a drummer and he plays all multiple instruments but he was uh, asked to come and be a part of the Georgia Mass Band and he called me and asked me to pray for, with him and so I prayed with him and I said well now you got to do the work this boy labored five and six hours a day to prepare for the audition he had to audition for this uh, nonprofit organization and they took the cream of the crop I mean they're excellent this is the Georgia Mass Band well he auditioned and got in and he's on drum line so I'm telling you you know about drum line right oh my baby he, he was tearing it up 
Michael Phelps, he's another one. The Aquaman. That boy can swim. Did you know that he would play for the NFL first before he went into the Olympics? I mean, 28 medals, 23 gold medals. He practices every day. He, he says, as I put, I discipline my body. This is how a Christian has to do, okay? This, I don't know what his belief is, but he had to discipline his body. He had to watch what he eat. We've been talking, passing on, been talking about this. You have to watch what you eat. You have to get your rest, get your sleep, and then you have to avoid extracurricular activities. You know what I mean? Like weefer. <laughs> weefer. The stuff, blunts, which you'd be trying to get the... The blunts, those little bottles of liquor that you be trying to, <laughs> you got to avoid all of that because I was reading when I was prepared for this, I was reading and, and, and the coach said that one of his runners came and said, well, coach, can I drink and smoke? He said, sure, but you ain't going to win. <laughs> so, I mean, if you just practical senses. I mean, I look at Toya. <laughs> this girl, <laughs> she is on the run. She does what she needs to do. She don't sit down. But she's on a race to win. We're on a race to win. But what we're going for is something eternal. We're going for the rewards that God has for us. The honor, the rewards, the blessings. And how many of us want that? Yes. But it's something that we have to do while we're here. We have to make the most of our opportunity while we're here to do and walk in our calling. We cannot sit on the gifts that God has given us. Amen. Philippians 1, Philippians 1, we're going to look at 12 and 14. Listen to what uh, Paul says here once I get to Philippians. Okay. Listen to what he says. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord having become confident by my chains are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Praise God. Do you see that Paul realizes that nothing was going on with him and the suffering that he was going, that didn't mean anything to him. It was all about serving Jesus Christ. It was about furthering the gospel, getting the message out so that more people would be saved, set free, and delivered. And that was his aim. That was his goal. And he didn't let nothing stand in the way. How about us? We get a hangnail. It's like, oh, can't go to Bible class. <laughs> Got to get my hair done. I, I, I'm real serious about this, saints. God will give you the strength to do what you are called to do. I know because he's done it in my life. When I came into salvation, I was messed up. Messed up. I went to church most of my life, didn't we, Bear? But didn't learn nothing. Not one iota. I didn't know anything until I came here to the college. <laughs> and when Pastor Cox started teaching, I'm like, are we in school here? What? I'm saying this in my mind, like, am I in college? 
What kind of words is he using? I ain't never heard those before. I'm like, what is that? What, what did, I had to write it down. What, what did that mean? What did that? What? But I learned. And the word showed me my weaknesses and the sin in me. I knew it. Look at Paul. He said, don't worry about this. Oh, they got me under house arrest. That's okay. I got this. I'm going to minister to the ones in the prison. I'm going to minister to the Roman soldiers. They're going to get saved. The power of the gospel does what it's supposed to do. See, we don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. I'm just... I'm not eloquent with words. Neither am I. Neither am I. But I tell you what, the Holy Spirit will give it to you. Okay? Don't second guess the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is powerful. He will put things. Now, when I'm when I study, I shut that Bible. I don't look at it. I say, you got this, Lord. You put into me what I need to say. You put a guard over my mouth. Determination. Marion Webster defined this as a firm and fixed intentions to achieve. Saints, we got to be committed when we're faced with oppositions. We have to, we have to stand. We can't buckle. We have to be committed. No, I don't care about that what's happened. I'm going to do what I am called to do. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. And nothing is going to stand in my way of doing it. Are we committed? Are we committed? Determined perseverance. Sorry. To persist in a state or undertaking. Listen to this. In spite of counter influences, oppositions, or discouragement, are we persevering? Huh? Are we persevering? Even when you lose your house, when you lose your finances, maybe you've lost your job, maybe you've lost a loved one, maybe you've had something traumatic happen in your life. Are we going to persevere under that attack? Are we going to persevere under that attack when you get a sickness or disease? Let me tell you, my friend Mary, she always said, God has a plan for me. They gave her six months to live. She lived six months. But through it all, she said, Trace, God has a plan. When you know that God has a plan for you and you know that he loves you, you can die gracefully. She died gracefully. She went right on home to be with the Lord. Not once did she complain. Can we do that? If somebody was given a a sickness or a disease or pain in your body, How do you respond? How do we respond to adversities? How do we respond when we're being tempted? Do we play along with it? (laughs) Or do we say, no, I'm not going to dishonor God. I'm going to honor him because he's worthy of all praise. What he's done for me, I'm going to live for him. I'm going to live by his way, his will. And you know, sometimes we can go through trials. And it's not because God is not with us, because we know in his word, he says he's always with us. That he would never leave us nor forsake us. And sometimes we may even feel, okay, God, you don't love me? Are you, are you displeased with me? It doesn't matter. 
You, you may not be doing something wrong and trials come because God is testing us. He's allowing it in our lives. Trials test. Do we pass the test? Do we stand up? Because there are blessings for those who patiently stand up against trials. There are blessings. Can we do it? And we can't run. And we surely can't hide like Jonah. You look at Job. You look throughout the Bible and it will show you numerous people who suffered for Christ's sake. And they persevered. They endured the test. They endured saints. And if they can endure it, certainly we can. And we have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Praise be to God. Let's, let's go to James. We're going to go to James chapter 1, verse 12. I love the book of James because... James wrote this letter to the 12 tribes that were scattered abroad and they were under persecution. And he wanted to give, he wanted to encourage them and build them up during these trying times. Count it all joy. Oh, that sounds so good. Count it all joy. When you're going through various trials, because the testing of your faith produces perseverance. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. How many of us love God? So to, to get this, what we have to do, is we have to endure temptation. We have to endure those trials that come up against us in our lives. We stand up against it. We stand and we use God's word and his promises to help us, to get us through those areas in our lives. You know, trials will, will reveal a lot of things to us. Sometimes we're in those trials for a long time. You may say, well, why me? Well, why not you? We complain, why me, Lord? Why do I have to go through it? Well, why not? Jesus went through it. His disciples went through it. His followers went through it. So why not us? And then we look at trials like, oh, look what happened. We get surprised. We shouldn't even be caught off guard like that. Trials are going to come. It's evident. Every believer... Because I could tell you when I wasn't a believer, everything was just going. I had no problems. But as soon as I said yes to Jesus, boy, everything started rolling around. <clears throat> but God is with us. He is for us. And we have his promises. And he is a man of his word that we can believe and trust in him and know that we can get through it. We know it's painful. We know it's heartbreaking. It's discouraging. But we can get through it. One another. Each other. Because we are all in one body. We are the body of Christ. And we are here to help and encourage and to build one another up during times. Amen? Don't go MIA. That means missing in action. We be blowing up your phones and you don't answer. <laughs> then we have to do a drive-by, you don't answer. And then as a nurse, we have to go do a police call. Can you go do a well check on this one? Lana, no. They don't know. They probably did a lot of those calls. Amen. Let me tell you something. Let's, let, let's, let's look. 
let's just look at Daniel. I love this. Me actually, uh, Mary and I was talking about this. I said, girl, you know my message, don't you? Turn to Daniel 3 because this was just phenomenal. Now, these are three Hebrew boys, okay? And we're just going to set it up. Nebuchadnezzar got this gold image, and he wanted everybody to bow down to it, and they refused to bow down. So now he's going to give them a second chance to see if they're going to have a change of heart. And so we're going to pick it up in 16. Listen to what they say. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Are we in Daniel chapter 3, verse 16? All right. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. <laughs> I love it. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Fiery furnace. Okay, so just picture that. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, now I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, would you still be faithful? Okay, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, <laughs> that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship your gold image, which you have, which you have set up. Now, is that some faith to endure? No matter what the... Now, you're getting ready to get thrown into the fire. How will we respond? Thank God we're not at that, at that time where we're going to be. But let me tell you, we do have some fiery furnaces. There are some fiery furnaces in our lives. Oh, you better believe it. There are some fire, and, and, he, and some of those fiery furnaces are cranked up seven times. The heat is so hot, you're backed up against the wall. Like, Lord, where, I need an escape route. Do we give up? Do we give in? Do we throw in the towel? Abort the mission? Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> We're not going to abort the mission. We are not going to abort the mission. We're going to go full speed ahead. We're going to run this race like never before. Amen? Amen? And whatever try to get in the way, you just give it a little kick. All you got to do is and keep running. Amen? I'm so sick and tired of my flesh. <laughs> okay? Don't, don't blame it all on the devil. I, I think we blame everything on it. Well, the devil made me do it. No, the devil didn't tell you to go sleep with that girl, that boy. The devil didn't tell you to cheat on your taxes. You want more money. We got to be like those three Hebrew boys. We got to stand up and be firm and fixed. We got to do it. Like Marquise say, where is Marquise? We got to be bout about it. I love that. We got to be bout about it. Let's turn to Hebrew. And we're going to carefully look at this in Hebrew chapter 12. And this is a little longer, so bear with me, okay? And this is, 
I'm telling you, this is going to bless you. Hebrews chapter 12. This writer had it going on. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. I'm sorry. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnares us. And what did it tell us to do? And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Here it is right here. Let us run. Looking unto Jesus. So this is what you do. You're looking, refocusing your sight on Jesus. Not the circumstance. Not the problems. Not the issues that come. But you're looking at Jesus. And this is what the last always say, the author and finisher of our faith. But I like how some translations say the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. He's the one that began it, and he is the one that finished it. And he triumphed. And if he triumphed, we are overcomers too. We triumph too. We triumph over depression and anxieties. We triumph over those situations in our minds that try to set up room in our mind. He is the author and finisher. And that is who we look at. We look away at those things that try to want to tag along with us, the distractions of life. You know, we have those duties that we have to do. As people here, we have to work. We have to take care of our children. If you're married, you got to take care of your spouse. Thank God I'm not married no more. I ain't got nothing. I, I'm not hating on the marriage. Y'all want to be married, that's good. I'll come to, I'll come to your wedding. I'll give you a gift. But do you see what the writer is trying to tell you here? Looking unto Jesus. Look away from those things that distract you. Look to Jesus. And then listen, listen to this. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame Jesus himself was able to despise the shame and go to the cross because he was looking at each and every one of you every one of you who said yes to his way and his will every one of you oh, that blessed me oh. Mm, mm, mm. and look and has sat down he was on Calvary died on the cross went to the tomb was raised and now he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God with all power the exalted one all power is in his hand and he has given us power. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. And there is nothing, nothing like him. We can do it. We can do it. You got to get this kingdom mindset. We got to set this mind on things above, not the things below. We have to renew this mind. And the Holy Spirit will help you. You got to be cooperative. We got to study the word. We got to allow the word to be internalized. Deep down in us. So it'll just flow. When something come up. 
I know what the word said. When that temptation come, I know what the word said. But we ain't done. Listen to this. For consider him who endures such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. So when you feel that way, if you feel weary and discouraged, look to Jesus. Look at what he went through. Look at what he went through. And you'll say, oh, well, this is nothing. Easy peasy. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. Turn to your neighbor and say, are, are you still here? And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. So this is going to help you when you're feeling like, well, Lord, how long am I going to go through this, this trial? Because he, 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 needs you to, he needs you to grow up. He wants you to grow. He needs to do more teaching and education in you. He needs to mold you a little bit more. He's the potter at the wheel molding you. More and more like Jesus Christ. So if you're going longer in that trial, you need to ask God, well, God, what am I not doing? What is, what is, what is, what's actually going on? What's, what, what, what's actually, what do I need to do? Because I want to grow up spiritually. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And scourges every son who he has, who, whom he receives. Now listen to verse 7. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten. Now that word chastening, I said, Lord, chaser? That's, that's just like them switches that I used to get. <laughs> I mean, you want to, like them switches my Isabella used to, you know Val, you know about them switches. She had us going out in the backyard and get them switches and, and boy, sting our legs and we had to go to school with whips on her. I said, oh my tell the law enforcement officers on her. <laughs> Child abuse. But I'm still here. But that's not what God is saying here. This word chasing means to train children for them to learn or to be instructed. That's what it is. So he's teaching us. He's training us. We're in training, just like an athlete. Okay? We're in training. An athlete has to go through vigorous, long hours of exercising, weight lifting. I don't know all that they do. They run, they exercise, they lift in weights. They do all of these necessary things. You know, Brother Delance be on Facebook like he doing something. <laughs> He got the sweat rolling off his face. I'm like, he ain't did nothing. He just, he just on there posting that. I know that's a, that's an AI, that's an AI shot. I said, I don't, I don't even know. I'm like, he acting like he doing something. That's, that's an AI. That's an AI. I know that's what that is. But listen, saints, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious about this. We have got to get in the Word. Part of our spiritual training is reading the Word, studying the Word, meditating on the Word, allowing the Word to grow us every day. How are you going to know God's will if you don't even read the Bible, the instruction manual? Huh? That's how I knew about uh, uh, unforgiveness. 
Well, first of all, Pastor, Pastor Cox had did a message on it, and I'm like, ooh. It showed me that I was not walking in forgiveness. And I'm not saying forgive, forgiving somebody who, you know, is, that's hard. But we got to do it. Once you do it, it would, just do it. And I, I say do it immediately. Don't let that linger and you be thinking on like, ah, oh, they don't deserve to be forgiven. Well, God forgave you. So we're in training. We're being educated by the father. Just like a father, Pastor Cox, Pastor Noel, the Lance, all you other brothers out there who have children, Brother Michael, you, Brother Minister Clifton, Minister David, I, I'm, if I miss anybody, please forgive me, Brother Minister Daryl. You train your children. You teach your children. You correct your children. You don't hate them. So why you give God all that flack? When, he, when, he, when he's training you and, and correcting you. Why are you giving God all that flack? Complaining, whining. Serenading. We do not know how much time that we have here. Let's be about about it. Let's just get on it. We get on it together. We don't wait. Don't waste another minute. I'm going to read something else. Let's look at verse 11 of Hebrew chapter 12. And I hope that this will bless you. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, after it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it, You get trained. You get taught. And fruit comes from it. God sees that. Look at my daughter. Look at my son. Look what they're doing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They're walking in love. They have the peace of God. The blessings. There's blessings that come from all of this. I don't know about you, but I want the blessings. Okay, let's turn to 2 Timothy because I, I just want us to look at it, uh, Paul because Paul surely was a fighter. And this is what we have to do too. We have to fight too. The good fight of faith. The good fight of faith. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. Okay, listen to what Paul wrote this letter to young Timothy, who was probably discouraged, and he wrote this letter to encourage him. He says, uh, verse 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You see that? What did he do? He fought the good fight. I have finished the race. There's some criteria here. I kept the faith. Finally, there's laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on the day, and not only to me only, not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearance. Raise your hand if you are loving his appearance. Are you faithful to your call? Are you faithful to your call? I don't hear any answers. Are you faithful to your call? What do we need to do? 
fight the good fight. What do we need to do? I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that. Say it again. We're going to look right before we close here. I want you to go to 2 Corinthians 11. Okay, I'm going to look at... Uh, Twenty-four, and this is Paul. Give you an idea of what he went through. From the Jews, five times I received forty stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and day, I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of rotter, robbers, in perils, of, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils of the wilderness, huh, and more, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleepless often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, besides other things, what comes upon me daily? Listen to this. My deep concern for all the churches. For all the churches. This was his deep concern. He wasn't concerned about those other things. He wanted to make sure that each and every one of you is living and growing spiritually in the Lord, fulfilling your God talent that God has given you. So I'm closing. And I'm going to pick this up another time because it's more. Because like what Naomi has given us from the Lord, we don't know what's coming. We have to be ready. COVID took us all by surprise. And it took a lot of people out. But this church, no one perished. Come on now. In this church, no one perished. Praise be to God. Because you know why? Pastor Noel got right on it. He got right on it. Having prayer groups, people praying 24 hours. So I want to encourage you to fight the good fight of faith. No matter what comes up against you, no matter what opposition, no matter what fiery furnace that you're dealing with, know that God is with you, he is for you, he will never forsake you, he goes right beside you, he goes straight through the fire with you. No matter what, he is right there with you. You got to believe that. You have to believe it. Confident, taking back the land he's promised, we will not forget.